Hello and welcome to ROS 101 Fun Approach delivered to you by Semmer. Uh, just a quick recap on what we did so far. Uh, we learned how to use uh, some ROS utilities like publishers and subscribers and we are introduced to that architecture where we have a team of nodes working uh, on their individual tasks while at the same time maintaining communication between uh, one another to achieve the tasks of the project and we began to get used to using the terminal instead of just uh, navigating through the GUI. We were also introduced to Python language and we used it to create our packages. So today we will run our first mobile robot simulation and this is uh, the fun part of the course when you get to actually implement something and uh, we will have a brief introduction to robot kinematics and what I mean by kinematics is uh, the values or the variables uh, that has to do with the robot motion without considering forces and masses and inertias and we'll get you know uh, introduced to that in a in a bit and then we'll play with a turtle so we'll have a turtle like robot which will use to uh, navigate uh, through some uh, environment and we got to discuss that in a bit as well so let's dive in so what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm going to open up my uh, Firefox browser to search for something called turtle sim right or short for turtle simulation which is the simulation we use today so I'm gonna type turtle sim ROS for example right so it would pretty much be the first result here turtle sim ROS wiki as I said before ROS wiki is a very important resource when you're dealing with ROS and here we will see that the first title is getting started with turtle sim and it will instruct you on how to start the simulation so basically when you run uh, these commands you will find something like that which is the turtle simulation so first of all I'm gonna open up a terminal all right and I'm gonna uh, activate my ROS master through the ROS core command and then I'm going to open a new terminal. Well, I think I already installed uh, the turtle sim environment and I think it was installed with ROS already so I'll try to just run turtle sim right away and see if the simulation runs. If it doesn't run then you have to execute this command first. Right, so no problem. So I'm going to paste this and I'm going to use enter. Yeah, uh, the simulation ran and in this case we have a turtle here and the funny thing is this turtle actually uh, you know differs from one uh, ROS user to another so every time you open up a terminal like that you'll find that the turtle uh, shape is different and it's pretty you know I like colors so it's pretty cool right so we have our turtle simulation uh, up and running so in order to investigate what this turtle simulation is we need to you know, um, figure out what topics are currently are currently available in uh, the ROS master. So I'm gonna open up the terminal and just uh, open a new terminal or a new tab, Control Shift T, and then I'm gonna ROS topic list to see what topics are now running. So we've got the first two. The first two are pretty basic. So whenever you open a ROS master, the first two ROS out and ROS out. AGG are always running, but we got some new topics here, which pretty much, well, I can deduce that they belong to this simulation since they're called Turtle 1, and then Turtle 1 something. So we've got Turtle 1 CMD VEL, and I can deduce that VEL is short for velocity, and we've got Turtle 1 color sensor, and we've got Turtle 1 pose. So these are the topics that are currently running, all right, on uh, the ROS server or the ROS master in this case. Uh, so why don't we just investigate what these topics do or look like or anything. So I can use the command ROS topics, sorry, ROS topic, uh, info, followed by the name of the topic that I want to investigate. So for example, I'm going to investigate this topic first. So you can uh, copy it by using Control shift c I guess. Then Control shift v here to paste. Yeah, it worked. All right, so what, what, what we're going to find here is that this topic uh, 
has the type or the data type geometry messages twist. And this is a new data type. We were first introduced to the standard messages, which included stuff like the integer 16, the integer 64, the float numbers, the float arrays, and stuff like that. So this is a new data type called the geometry messages. And we can actually investigate that by navigating to, you know, our ROS installation. So we've got other locations, then computer, then the opt, then ROS, and got Neotic, which is our current distribution, and then the share folder. The share folder contains, you know, uh, all the packages and all the message types like that was already installed with ROS, so they are not made by the user. Our own packages are located within our workspaces, but the packages that are already available when you download ROS or when you install ROS, you'll most likely find it here. So you'll find a lot of packages. And you'll also find the message types. So uh, what we need to do is to look for geometry messages. So I believe that's somewhere here, I guess. Um, yeah, we're going to find them. Yeah, here they are. So these are the geometry messages. And you got the message folder here. So this is basically a package that's made up of messages. And we'll find, yeah, we can find um, this message type was called twist, yeah. So we can open up twist here. And you'll find that it this message is a composite message. And what I mean by a composite message, it is made up of many variables, all right? So it's made up like of two vectors, one denoting linear velocity, which means the velocity in the x direction, the velocity in the y direction, and the velocity in the z direction, because this is a vector made up of three components. And I guess this vector itself is a data type, yeah? So you'll find that there is a message called vector3. So this message actually, twist, is made up of multiple messages. So it's made up like of two messages. All right, so this is a message of messages. Uh, and this pretty much uh, elaborates on the fact that you can use, you know, other messages to form a new type of message. So let's investigate vector3 first. Right, yeah, as I said before, vector3 is composed of three variables, and this time we've got like discrete data types. We've got float64 data types, so this vector3 is made up of three variables, each of them is float64. All right, um, so we've got x, y, and z per vector3 message type, and we've got the twist, which in itself is made up of two vectors. So we can deduce that vector or the, or the twist message is made up of like six components, three of which are the components of a vector called linear, and three uh, and other three, which are made up of three components, x, y, and z, called angular. All right, great. So this is how you begin to investigate a package that you run, all right? Uh, you'll usually like get to know the topics first and what each topic represents and what what its messages are made up uh, from. So let's get back to our terminal. Uh, by the way, you can also use ROS message info in case you don't want to open up, you know, like uh, the original source or the original code of the message itself, then you can use ROS message info. And I'm going to use, you know, like copy this message type. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to copy it, control shift C, and I'm going to control shift V here. And yeah, we figured out pretty much the same thing uh, through the terminal itself instead of just navigating for the folder. In case you forgot where the folder is located or you just want a quick, um, you know, overview on that message type. So we, we pretty much got the same result uh, that we did used earlier. All right. So let's deal with that right now. All right. Um, so what this twist does, or what this twist topic uh, does, is that, first of all, uh, it has a subscriber. So we've, you've got a list of publishers and a list of subscribers. So there are no publishers that publish to this topic right now. And this is pretty much the reason why um, the turtle is like static. It's not moving because nobody's publishing to the velocity uh, topic or the CMD velocity topic so far. 
So it, it's got no publishers, and at the same time, it's got only one subscriber, which is the turtle simulation itself. So this simulation here, this terminal here, is subscribing to this topic, but it's not receiving anything, and this is why the turtle is not moving. So what if we want to make the turtle move? So this will be our little project today. We need to make this turtle like move, all right? So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a package called for example turtle play and this package will be designed in order to you know control uh, this um, turtle all right and make it move in certain directions for example so I'm gonna just you know uh, I'll leave the turtle sim node running and I'll leave the score running so yeah let's get back to our home directory and let's get to the catkin workspace where our projects are located and let's make up a new package here so Let's open a terminal here because I want to create a package within this directory and I'm going to uh, type catkin create package. And I'm going to call it like total play. So total play. All right, so the package was created. And you can see that we've got the same CMake list of uh, file and the package XML file. So what we need to do now is that we need to build this catkin workspace before uh, going on and creating our folders within our package. We first need to build the workspace. So we use the command catkin build. And yeah, all our packages now are built. So I'm only concerned with the turtle play package right now. So as we said before, we need to create like a scripts folder because this is the folder that's going to contain most of our code or most of our Python codes. All right, so we're going to call this scripts, the same convention that we used so far. And again, it's not obligatory, but it's really, uh, you know, um, good to have some convention because other people are going to use this project of yours. So I'm going to navigate to scripts. And I need to open up like a new uh, uh, file. So I'm going to change my directory to uh, uh, SRC and maybe uh, Turtle Play. You can do it all at once by just typing the whole address or the whole, you know, the di directory uh, location. I'm just going to do it like that. And then scripts. All right. So we're here. Let's create a new file and call it touch, for example. Mm, what do we call it? We need to, you know, control the turtle. So let's call it control, for example, control the pie. Right. So we got to open up our code here. And our code is still empty, so we need to fill it up. So what we need to create is a publisher since as we have deduced here before, can close that now, we don't need it. We deduced here before this uh, topic has a subscriber, which is the turtle simulation and it's got no publisher. So we need to create a publisher to publish some values to this simulation. So first of all, I'm gonna determine my user environment Which is Python 3 uh, user bin environment and Python 3 All right and we're gonna import RossPy sorry import RossPy because we're writing Python and we're using Ross so it's RossPy and we need to you know import our data types or our message uh, type so as we said here, we got like this message type, which is geometry messages, and we got to import twist from geometry messages. So we're going to type from geometry messages, sorry, import, uh, we said twist. So yeah, geometry messages, let me just check the spelling. Yep. Great. But uh, what we're gonna do next is that we going we're going to initialize our node. So, respy 
dot init node. And I'm gonna give it a name. Let's give it just a name control, same as the Python file, in order to have no 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 not to have multiple names. Right? You can call the node and the file the same name. And we need to create a publisher, so I'm gonna create a pub object. You don't have to call it pub, I just call it pub by default. Uh, and we're gonna use the function or spider publisher. And we can supply the name of the topic. So the name of the topic is cmdvel, as far as I'm concerned. Yep, it's turtle one cmdvel. So let's copy the whole name here. Let's put it here. Right, and this type is of the message, uh, and this message is of the type, or the topic has a message of the type twist. And we'll let the queue size be equal to one, for example. Right. So now we have our publisher object. So let's publish some constant speed. Well, before that, let's define our message first of all. So we got message. This message is gonna be of the type twist. Right. And this is and because this is a composite message, we have first to define its type because I can just say that message is equal to um, you know, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, and stuff like that. I just have to determine the type of the message itself. So the message or this variable is going to be of the type twist, which I imported here, and then I'm going to fill it up, All right? So since this message of the, is of the type twist, so I can access its components, All right? So we've got here, like how many components? Let's get back to here. We got... A vector called linear all right so let's give it like some linear velocity so I'm gonna focus on the linear part and actually we've got three linear parts X Y and Z so let's focus on X for now for example so what I'm doing here is like I have an object and this object has multiple properties it's like an object of an object so you've got linear right which is some property of message, and at the same time, X is some property of linear. So it's like, you know, as we said, it's composite messages or objects of objects. You can call it whatever you like now. I'm not, I'm not really interested in the details, but you know what I mean, all right? You get the idea. So let's give it a value of one, for example, all right? And that's it. Um, feel free to give values to other components, but right now I'll just focus on the X component, right? And while not raspi is shut down, so as long as raspi is running, we're gonna publish this message. So we're gonna say uh, pub the publish the message and then we gonna sleep for a while so let's just say we will sleep for us by uh, dot sleep sorry dot sleep let's just sleep for like mm, one second all right let's try that so it's, we have a frequency of one Hertz here all right so we send a message every second so I guess like we're done, I believe. Maybe I forgot something, but we'll just find out here when I run this node. So I've got control.py, and I don't have I uh, I need not to for I need not forget to allow executing the file as a program from the permissions here. And then um, let's open this up. Let's open this up as well. We've got the raw score up and running, so let's try to. Ross run or node. So let's ross run and the package name, which is turtle play. And um, we've got the executable, which is control the pi. All right. Um, package turtle play not found. Well, this is weird. All right. Um, yeah, maybe it's because uh, this terminal was opened 
right before I made this package, right? So this terminal used an all sourcing command. As we said before, whenever you open up a new terminal, it runs the bash RC. And the bash RC controls the, uh, has the sourcing line that we placed at the very beginning. So when this terminal used the sourcing command in the bash RC, this package was not created, not yet. So that's why I can't see it right now. So I believe we need to close this um, terminal completely. And then we open up a new terminal. And then we'll just open up everything again. The raw score first. All right, and let's just um, run uh, our our simulation again. All right, I'm just gonna copy the command again from the website. So I'll just copy that. Then Control Shift V here. So the simulation is up and running again. And I think our turtle has changed, right? I think the other, this is kind of bluish, but the other one was like green, or light colors, All right? So uh, now we need to run our package again, or our executable. So we've got turtle play, and then we've got the script control, the pi. Uh, all right, we've got a pro this time our problem is not that the package is not seen. We have a problem in the code itself. So we've got a problem in line four here, and we can import name twist from geometry messages. All right, maybe I think I made a mistake with the name, maybe. So let's check it out again. Just gonna go get the code again, and we've got the twist message here. Mm -hmm. So let me think. Let me think for a little bit. <clears throat> so what did we do wrong? All right. Um. So let's open up the terminal. To, let's cross topic list, for example. Oh, maybe I forget. Yeah, geometry messages dot message. Yeah, yeah, I forgot the dot message here. I think that was the problem. Yeah, all right, so let's try and run it again. Uh, Rustby is shut down. I, yeah, I mistyped Rustby is shut down. So sometimes you forget how commands are written so it's no problem I'll just search for it on the Ross wiki uh, our friend here Ross wiki can solve everything so rustpy dot is shut down alright so yeah rustpy dot is shut down so let's check it out how we typed it here uh, while not, Ross by dot is shut down, not underscore. All right. So let's have our turtle here again, and let's have our. So yeah, now we got the turtle moving until it heads the wall. Yeah, it's gonna hit the wall. Probably, is, yeah, it typed this funny message. Oh no, I hit the wall. All right. So we can kill this one, um, but it's still hitting the wall. All right, so let's help our turtle here. We can, um, you know, uh, we got out of velocity, which is one, for example, one meter per second. So we need to get this to be negative one. And instead of, uh, you know, using one not rust by shut down, we, if we just, uh, 
uh, keep it that way, then the turtle will keep moving backwards until it hits the wall again. So we need to give it like some sort of a delay where it gets backward for a little bit before hitting the wall. So let me just change the code here. Instead of having one not raw spice shut down, maybe we can type something else. We can type uh, four. This is the for loop. For loop is like that kind of loop which executes for a particular number of times and or until a certain condition is met. So I'm gonna run this loop for five times, for example. So I'm gonna say for i in range, sorry, five, which means that i will take the values zero, one, two, three, and finally four, All right? And that will be it. And then we can like add a raw spider spin here in order to leave this spinning. Or no, we need we need to add it actually. So let's try this now. Let's try the new code. Let's save our total. So let's run it now. See what happens. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So the turtle kept moving backwards till the delay was finished and till, you know, here you could notice that the ROS run command was terminated on its own because here I didn't say while well, not ROS pi is shut down because uh, that command means that the node will keep running until you kill the process or you kill the ROS core or something like that. But here I just use a for loop. So this, this for loop executed like for... Uh, five iterations and that was it so the code was like finite it was not like running infinitely all right so let's just investigate you know like other topics notice that there are two more topics right? i think you stopped hitting the wall so yeah this message kept the this message was like kept being sent for a while and now it stopped because you can because this um uh, you can't scroll down any any longer because the message uh, is now terminated. So it kept sending this message for like, I don't know, 100 times maybe, and then it stopped because it's no longer hitting the wall. So um, let's investigate the other ROS topics, ROS topic list. So we've got another one called the color sensor. Right, so... Let's echo this color sensor thing. Right, let's open up a new uh, term uh, terminal tab here and let's type prostopic echo, for example, this command, this, uh, sorry, this, uh, this topic name. So control shift C and control shift V here. So yeah, it's basically, I don't know. It's some color, it's, it's an RGB value. And what an RGB value is, it's just, you know, every color in the world can be made up of, you know, different proportions of three basic colors, which is red, green, and blue. So it has three components. Every color is composed of like three RGB components or red, green, blue components. And each one has a value ranging from zero to 255. And this denotes the intensity of that proportion. So if you have a lot of red, or pure red, for example, then you're gonna have red like 255 and blue and green are zero. This is pure red, for example. And if you have pure green, then you have 255 green and zero for both red and blue. And yeah, so I'm not sure really uh, what this color represents. Maybe the color of the turtle itself or, I don't know, not sure. It's a color sensor, so it's detecting some color or it's seeing something, but I'm not sure what's seeing actually. I've never, you know, I've never opened this, opened up this topic before. All right, I usually focus on the CMD velocity and this and the pose topics. Uh, uh, maybe you can search for the color sensor what it actually does out of curiosity. So turtle sim color sensor. So we'll probably get. Uh, Roswiki. So let's add Roswiki because I want to get to the source. Um, yeah, here's the turtle. So I'm actually opened that, <laughs> opened that before, so let's just navigate through that. Uh, we've got the topics. Yeah, pose, color, color, color. 
Actually, I can't see color. Let's control find color. Um, so I don't think, yeah, they didn't document the color thing. Right, let, let's see the subscribe topics. Uh, yep. Um, all right, the published topics maybe. Mm hmm. Nothing. Yeah, they focused on the twist and the poems as well. All right. So let's get back to, for example, the post topic because this topic is pretty important. And what the word pause pause means, it's your like, it's your location, which is your x y coordinates. Since this is a two D simulation, so you can basically define the location of your robot, and this is pretty important. This part. You can define the location of your robot using your x coordinate, your y coordinate, and your angle. Uh, your angle. Sometimes it's called the L angle. Sometimes it's called the L attitude. Sometimes it's called, you know, um, just the angle or theta, right? Which is a variable denoting uh, the angle. Because this robot here is looking forward, so it might be in the same x, y, and location, but it might be looking that way, for example. So you have three variables that could fully describe your location. And this is part of the kinematics overview I was talking about. You have, in order to have, you know, like a full description of your robot kinemat kinematics, you have to have like three global coordinates. Uh, these global coordinates define your location relative to some global. Uh, fixed axis here. Let's just say that this represents the x-axis and this here represents the y-axis and this point here represents the origin for example. All right. Uh, maybe the fixed frame is here. So they, they do not show what the fixed frame is but point is that this pose uh, variable here, this pose topic here defines the three global coordinates of this robot. So these are global coordinates. So what's the difference between a pose and a velocity. So your velocity is local, right? First, there's the, the clear kinematic definition because velocity is like the derivative of position, but it's not like the, you know, the exact derivative of the pause because this pause is a global variable, which means it's description of the location of the robot relative to the global x, y, coordinates, but when you talk about the CMD velocity, it's your local velocity. That means that the turtle, for example, might have like, you know, let's just open up whiteboard here. So whiteboard online. Yep, this one. Uh, yes, start a whiteboard. All right, so Let's, for example, consider that this, these pathetic axes here represent our global x and y axes, right? And this is our robot, which is located at point x, right? So we've got the coordinates of the robot, which might be represented by this vector here. So this is the x coordinates, this is the y coordinates. So this, these are the, basically the x, y location of my robot here, and we've got the theta which is like the angle or the attitude of the robot, right? Uh, well, actually the theta, no, this is not the theta I'm talking about. All right, so let's just change the color. I think there was a color change option here. Anyway, it doesn't matter, all right? So we've got like the X coordinate here and the Y coordinate here. Right, and we've got th some theta because this robot must have like a face here, so let's let's model a robot as a point, as uh, you know, some sort of pointer. It has some pointy face here, so this pointy face represents the face of the robot, and therefore it makes an angle theta with the x-axis. And for example, this is one of many poses that the robot can have. F for the same x and y, the robot might, for example, right? I need color right now. I don't think color is free here. Uh, yeah, color is probably not free. Anyway, so let's just say, let's remove this robot and let's assume that our robot is taking another pose here. 
All right. So right now it has the same X and Y as before, but you can see that the angle theta, now the face is here. So the angle theta has now changed to this. So it's like 120 degrees, uh, roughly. The first one was like, you know, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, something like that. So these are two different poses, right? But when, when we talk about the local variables, or the local velocity in this case, the local velocity x always points in the face, in the direction of the face of the robot. So my x velocity, which is the CMD velocity dot x that we used before, is in this direction. Because it's a local, it's attached to the body itself. All right, so my x is always pointing in my face, which is my local x that has nothing to do with the global x, right? And my y, for example, uh, if we take the right hand rule, then my y should be here, for example, and my z is pointing out of uh, uh, the paper, all right? The same for the global z. So the global z is the only thing that might be common here because this is a 2D robot, so. Uh, wherever my X and Y are, uh, you can find that the Z is always pointing out of the page, like here, for example, but out, you know, like in your face. All right. So we've got the X and Y. So this is my local X. I'm going to denote this by a small X, and this is a small Y. So velocity, when talking about mobile robots, velocity is always a local quantity. That means it fo its vector follows the the local description of the robot itself or the body description sometimes it's, they call it the local frame or the body frame so the body frame has the x always pointing right in the face direction and the y using the right hand rule and assuming that z is coming out of the page then the y has to be here to the left right so these are kind of different from the original x and y here right it's like the x and y were rotated by an angle theta, so this is the relation between the global x and the global uh, the global x and y and the local x and y. They are related together by this angle theta, and you can use you know like uh, resolution methods in order to determine what component of x here lies in the global x direction and what component of x here lies in the global y direction, and the same thing for the y here. So. This is basically a very simple description of our robot kinematics here. Well, it's going to be useful afterwards when we start working with like real physical robots. All right. So I just wanted to, you know, display that fact now because it's going to be pretty important for next stages. So I'm just going to leave that here. And I actually forgot what we're going to do now. Uh, I think we're, oh yeah, we're going to investigate the turtle one pose uh, topic. So I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to say here, last topic info. And the topic, which is control shift V. All right, so this uh, has the type pose, turtle sim pose, right? And it has one publisher and no subscribers. That means that this particular topic is being published by Turtle Sim itself. Unlike the CMD Vel, for CMD Vel there were no publishers. It was expecting me to create a publisher in order for it to work. But here, the pose is being produced by the Turtle Simulation itself to the topic. It has no, it has no subscribers yet. So I could create actually a subscriber in order to get information about my pose. Right. So it's some sort of feedback, you know. I'm getting feedback about my current pose, and this is really uh, the case for most uh, uh, robots or most mobile robots. The pose topic here presents the feedback because you always uh, need to control the robot in order to reach a certain location or a certain pose. So you need feedback pose, and you got to design some control module in order to, you know, orient your robot and let it move to the point or the pose that you want to move to for example let this pose be the target pose all right which is located like at some location where you want the robot to navigate to for example like amazon robots which is used which are currently used in warehouses where you need the robot to you know get uh, to a certain point where it's going to be loaded with products that it has to distribute through the warehouse 
So it gets the pose feedback, which is like the sensory message here. And the control module just analyzes where I am now and where I need to be. And then it produces a control action, which is the CMD velocity. So the CMD velocity is supposed to be the control action here that is, you know, letting the robot go to the point that is that is intended for it. All right. And we pretty much did a control module of sorts, a very simple one, because we like hit the wall here and I wanted to get back to somewhere here in the middle, like this circle here. I wanted to get to any point within this circle. So I designed a very open loop, uh, simple control. And I say open loop because it didn't rely on the post feedback. I just, you know, it was an open loop controller, no feedback. I just assumed that this for loop here for five iterations would let the robot be uh, somewhere here in the middle. And it's pretty inaccurate, but it was suitable for my application. For more complex application, applications, you usually get the pose feedback in order to, you know, have some sort of controller work on that and get the suitable control action to get the desired exact point that you want to be at or the desired exact pose, which is X, Y, and theta, All right? So let's create a subscriber here in our code. So, so far we had only a publisher, so let's create a subscriber. And yes, you can create both publisher and subscriber within the same node. So I can, I got to type cross by the subscriber here. And I'm going to determine the topic that I'm going to subscribe to. So we've got the topic, which is called, I think I copied it before. Yeah, the pose and its data type. So the data type here was pose turtle one, turtle sim pose. So, well, if we remember, we had the CMD vel, and we said that the CMD vel has a data type that is that belongs to the geometry messages, and it's of the type pose. Now we have a new type of message, which is turtle sim. So this is actually a custom message for the turtle sim package itself because it does not belong to the standard messages that we used before and it doesn't belong to the geometry messages which are widely used as well so this is some form of a custom message for uh the the turtle sim uh, application or uh, simulation here so let's let's go through uh our ROS distribution and search for it Right, let's see what this message is made up of. All right, I'm gonna go to the share and then I'm gonna search for the turtle sim. So turtle sim, turtle sim, turtle sim, turtle sim, turtle sim, turtle sim. Yeah, here it is. I've got a message here. And I've got the pose message. And yeah, it got, as I said before, like three components, X, Y, and Z. And actually it 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 also uh, contains feedback for your linear velocity and angular velocity so it's it's more it's more than a than just a pose message it also includes some velocity components and i'm not really sure whether this velocity is global or local but since this is a pose message is supposed to be global so let's check it out All right so let's add that to our code sorry here is our code so i'm going to copy that Right, and I'm going to say here, for example, from turtle sim, we got a special type of message here, turtle sim dot message. So I'm going to say turtle sim here, turtle, sorry, turtle sim, I guess, dot message import pose. Right, so I'm going to have the data type pose. And I'm going to have like a callback function as usual. So I'm going to call that a callback. And you can call anything, but I prefer to call callback this example. And then we're going to define this function callback. And this callback is supposed to have some message, right? It's going to, it's going to give me a message. And I want to print that message. So let's just print the whole message, right? As some sort of feedback here. So we've got our node, which is control. We've got a publisher and a subscriber. And let's just, you know, type cross spin here because we want to keep 
um, you know, receiving this message or this interrupt, we define the callback functions to be some sort of interrupt functions that uh, that are always running. So whenever or wherever I am in the code right now, whenever I receive a new message or the topic receives a new message, then I get to the callback routine and I get that message. So uh, if I don't type ROS spin here, then this this whole node here will be terminated and this. I can't use the callback function anymore. So I need to spin because the spin is like a while loop, an empty while loop, and I keep like frozen here. So whenever the callback routine is called, I'll just get from the respite of spin to the callback routine and I'll print the message. So point is I need the message to keep printing even when I'm done with the motion, right? So I'm gonna type respite of spin here. So let's try and run the code one more time. Um, let's have the turtle simulation here in order to visualize everything. So yeah, let's run it. Right, indeed, we got some feedback here. All right, and even though the turtle has stopped, well, the message has stopped as well. Uh, it seems like this message is only sent when turtle is moving. So anyway, let's investigate the message itself. All right, um, so we've got linear velocity feedback. But actually, the message is still being sent. I mean, check the scrolling part here. It's still moving. That means the message is being sent. And the, the, the proof for that is the linear velocity and the angular velocity are currently zero. Right? The, the, the turtle sim or the turtle bot here is not moving. Right. And the velocities are zeros indeed. So the robot was moving at some point, and that's pretty old. I mean, you can find that the linear velocity and the angular velocity are currently zero because there are messages that were, uh, you know, swept away because of the new messages here. So the message is actually still being sent, but I was tricked by this static shape here, but it's actually, it's being sent right, right now because the cursor is moving. So in order to, you know, check this, in order to prove this, I'm going to, you know, comment the Rospite spin. I'm going to use a hash. And we said before that whenever you comment something, then you're like telling the compiler to not to consider this line. So I'm going to comment it and I'm going to, you know, run the simulation one more time. But because I'm going to hit the wall, most likely then I'm going to let this be positive instead of negative just in order for me not to hit the wall one more time when I'm moving backwards. So I'm going to move a little bit forward here and I think I'm going to get back to the same location that I was at like in the last run. So I'm going to just run that again. All right, and let's check what's happening. And yeah, the note was terminated this time. It didn't keep like sending messages and Proof is the linear velocity is still one here. So if the node was still running indeed, then we would receive a zero for a linear velocity because it's now static. But the messages are not are no longer sent because this callback is no longer working because the node was the whole node was terminated. So this interrupt service routine is of no use anymore and it's not running anymore and I cannot run it. So let's check out the values that we have here. All right, so we have like the x, y reading. So right now, x is 7.7 .7 meters, around 7 meters, yeah. And the y is like 5.54 meters. So I think, yeah, I think that the fixed frame is somewhere here because you can see that, yeah, we can see if that is the X, then it makes sense that we ran around seven meters here because we crossed that middle line or that middle point here. So I guess that middle point, assuming that this area is a perfect square, that this point is somewhere at X equals 5.4 or 5.5 and Y is equal to 5.5. But because we are now located within the middle of this Y uh, vertical axis, so it's an exact 5.54, but because we moved like to the right of this axis here, so we've got some extra X here from the middle, which is around like 1.5 meters. So I can deduce that this little distance here, I move from the midpoint here is like 
1.5 meters or so, or maybe less, 1.4 something, 1.46, something like that. All right, so this is the pose. And we got the theta, which is zero, because the face of the robot is perfectly aligned with the x-axis, so it's a zero. So let's try to change another property here. So let's, instead of just giving some velocity in the x-direction, let's give a velocity in the theta direction. Right? And I think that was angular z, because we've got an angle about x. Right? And this one, you can control in a 2D simulation, I guess, because this is a 2D simulation, so you're not expected to, you know, see this turtle like uh, moving about itself or rotating around itself. That would be kind of weird to have in a 2D simulation. So we're going to focus on the Z axis because the Z axis is like the axis coming out of the page. And when we rotate about that axis, then that means that the robot will move like clockwise or counterclockwise. This sounds like a reasonable motion to me. So I'm going to change this to be angular. And let's change this to be Z. Right, so it's like one rad per second or one degree per second. It depends on the unit here. Not sure they type the unit within the data, the data type, right? No, they didn't say whether it's meter or... Yeah, they didn't say, right? So let's check it out. Let's try to run it one more time. Sorry. Let's try to run it one more time. Um, right, and let's check the messages here. So I've got the theta is changing and the robot is rotating indeed. And you've got an angular velocity on one, of one. I'm not sure whether this is a one rad per second, but I believe, yeah, it's rad because the theta here is like negative 2.28 now. All right, so that's closer to the value of pi. And I think that the robot here moved in degrees like, um, I think a value of, uh, maybe that's about uh, 240 degrees, I guess. This is 180, yeah, it's, yeah, it's closer to that. So if the value was indeed in, in degrees, then it would be bigger than 2.2. .2. So I think it's in rads because this is like negative 2.2, .2, then that means um, you know, it's probably a value that is in rad, not in degrees. So let's check out the rest of the message. Um, well, that is unexpected. That's, uh, yeah. Um, system failure. Uh, let's get the raw score again. And I'm going to use, um, I forgot what the command was again, so I'm going to copy it again from the turtle sim wiki. Yep, here it is, Ross Run. So I've got a new turtle this time. I'm pretty sure that this is a new turtle because this is yellow and part white. Right? And we've got the control here, we've got the simulation. Let's open up a new. Tap and let's run our simulation. So we keep yeah like rotating for a while. Then it's gonna stop. So yeah, it's the same angle. And you you can see that now the X and Y are totally equal, as I said before, at 5.54 meters because we're at the exact midpoint of this area here. Uh and yeah, the robot moves, so let's let's get back to the very first. Yeah, we started with theta of zero, then the theta continued to... Yeah, it continued to increase for a while. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, then 1. Then 1.37, 1.67, 2.144. Point eight nine and two point nine nine two three. We're closing into pi. Yeah, three point thirteen. Then yeah, we reach three point thirteen. Then negative three point thirteen. So I guess like 
reach the pi value, which is almost 3.14, that means like 180 degrees here, then it turned to be negative because like when we have two axes here, it follows like, you know, a convention that looks like this. We've got the X and Y here, right? So from here to here, you can say that we got from zero up to 180 degrees and from here, well, it was supposed to be like 190, then 160, then up to three, 360. But instead, some uh, some systems regard that this is the positive uh, part of the or the positive quadrants of my um, x y uh, coordinate system here, and then it starts to act negatively here. So this is negative 180 and at the same time this is positive 180 and negative 180 at the same time according to this convention so whenever I'm playing here then that's negative and I'm considering that I'm moving in the negative side of the x-axis and here that's positive and this is why it continued till 3.14 here which is pi and then when it transitioned here once it transitioned here it began to use the other convention for the negative side so it treated that like negative 3.14 and then up to zero again and some systems do that Right, it's called like the relative measurement. Some systems use the the, the system that we already know, or uh, uh, the absolute measurement system from zero up to three hundred and sixty degrees. And when it comes to red, then that's from zero to six point something. You know, just multiply three point fourteen, which is the value of pi by two. So yeah, that's it. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to elaborate on when it comes to the turtle sim simulation. I'm going to kill that and let my turtle rest for a while. So yeah, that was it. So to sum up what we did today, we interacted with some really made ROS packages. In this case, we dealt with the turtle sim package, which was a package that we did not create ourselves, but we managed to use through uh, investigating its topics and investigating the types of its messages and we began to understand how this ROS package works and this is how you're supposed to deal with newly installed packages that you know nothing about. You either read the readme file that is supplied with the package or you start to navigate navigate through the package yourself. All right, So that's a skill you need to develop in case you want to be a very successful ROS developer. And then we ran a simple robot simulation, which is the turtle sim simulation. And we now know uh, how to manipulate mobile robots, and we have an idea about how its kinematics work. So that was all for today, and hopefully that will help us to, you know, investigate more complex uh, ta robotic tasks or mobile robot tasks in the near future. Thank you.